Hello and welcome to another modeling video. This is Alan from the Mokana Man at YouTube with another model video. The last sponsored Let's Build, we finished this uh, graze on the star armor. We've only got the uh, back because uh, it's pretty noisy outside. And what we're going to do is another one over a lengthy period of time at Animasia. So we've got a little bit of a work table going on, a bit of a surprise kit and the current range. Store is a bit untidy, uh, though the heart is in the right place. All sorts of uh, fantas well, fantastic and mystical stuff. You can always get your SMS paint. What not? <laughs> uh, Duck and Makura, that's always fantastic. And a little tool rack. So we can get uh, straight into work and straight into unboxing our kit. So today we will be building the Master Grade Strike Rouge. Uh, the Strike Gundam uh, back in the 2000s, 2010 period. I uh, don't quite remember off the top of my head. Was uh, the Rolls Royce of Master Grades. Uh, it was one of the finest inner frames that came out. And uh, due to the versatility of the different armors that could uh, be swapped around and the tons of variants uh, one could do based off the show of uh, upgrades and whatnot, it was a very sought after frame kit to get, especially cheap, to do all of your conversions. A large uh, selection of no grades also came out and they were pilfered for parts and weapons and whatnot to mount on uh, the more superior master grade. So uh, these were really, really good kits. And these were the kits of choice for uh, all the magazine articles, your competitions, your uh, Bakuk, uh, Bandai Model Kit World uh, Cup. And I've always been, I'm not a big fan of the show, but I've always been fascinated in having a crack at it to see what the hype was when I was an up and starting uh, modeler, did an airbrush and uh, couldn't really do anything beyond a no grade or high grade. So. Uh, Let's um, dive straight into what my um, childhood um, fascination was all about with uh, this kit and show. So, 4,000 yen kit, not cheap, comes with a big base and all sorts of other stuff. And these older uh, Master Grades come with these lovely cardboard inserts with a big, beautiful um, print picture, almost uh, the same as um, resin kit. You can tell that this kit's been opened and uh, pilfered before, as uh, the instructions are normally on the bottom. The older master grade instructions were all laid out like this, and were really great for the interesting uh, layouts, artwork, and how it's organised sort of like a, a manual. So you'll have uh, one sheet with all of your instructions how to build, and on the other side you'll have technical detail some of these lovely uh, line art and sketch art and all these uh, bits and pieces. A lot of this information in Japanese which you can pick up on uh, Gundam Wiki, Wiki or Mecha HQ uh, fills in specs and details and materials and engineering concepts of these uh, machines uh, that may not be um, covered in the Canon um, animated series. Though, according to these wikis any information that does appear in these older Master Grade instruction books does become canon. It's got some screenshots as well as examples are uh, built uh, professionally. The uh, paint guide, uh, very ex extensive for the figure and the suit itself, is purely in the uh, Mr. Color Black Range by Goons and it gives you uh, mixed percentages. You still get this in your instructions, but it is covered in both uh, English and Japanese. Uh, these ones are only uh, Japanese, but uh, it's very, very easy to sort out, so would not to be worried. And the rest of it just goes into uh, instructions and more line-ups. So very, very impressive. Uh, we had a junked um, strike knob. I really liked uh, the face and uh, 
the front skirt armour detail which is compatible with this inner frame so we'll be swapping those two parts out and the rest is the parts breakdown for the kit for the hose large base and figure I'll most likely throw it on a large action base. Uh, Dante, the owner, was very nice to throw in these stickers. So we'll apply them as flat as possible to the base and uh, top coat them. Uh, that would be a very, very nice touch of detail. The starting out selection of tools I like to use is a hobby knife, uh, fine nippers, and a file. Uh, the idea with the nippers. If we were cutting out some parts, I was to make a cut, I would cut fairly close, so about here. And when it's removed, you'll have a very, very large nub sticking out. It stresses the plastic here, not here. Then I get closer, I cut it a few mil away, and then trim it back. and sand it away. That way, if you're a snapper, you'll have no stress marks on the plastic. Being a dark colour, it would remain that dark colour. You wouldn't have that white stuff. You cut very close, the piece bends, the gate bends, you get a massive white mark. Even if you've got those uh, god hands or special nippers, there is still movement, there's still pinching. It just pinches a lot less. Cut away, cut closer, and you clean up. It's the best way to do it, more or less. And as you do it um, over time, you get quicker and quicker. And there's no real shortcuts around it. If you paint, doesn't matter. Cut it close, trim it up, sand it up, have the white mark, and you paint it regardless. This build, we are definitely painting. Straight off the bat, the torso. So you've got one, you've got these two panels. When you've got these panels, these are the bits we assemble first to make up these larger bits and sandwich them together. And it's not enough to cut them out, slide and snap. This process can definitely be done in probably a minute to two minutes. To remove every nub, clean them off, then we're worried about the size of the peg holes for these to slide into, what colour they are, and if this piece remains a universal colour, or are we going to have it in separate parts for separate colours? If it's all one colour, all of this can be glued together, even with the um, polycaps, and we paint it one colour, there's not much mucking around to do. If it's visible on the outside, as most likely, this is all inner frame stuff, we put a little blue tack or masking agent on the polycaps, prime it, paint it one colour. It's more work at the very start, and there's planning and there's thinking, less work near the end. And that's when uh, you start to tire out and wish to move on from the project. Now what I like to do is sort through the runners. I'm looking for F, B, P, C and A. I open up the bags, but I keep them in the bags, the runners I am not actively using. So the runners that are actively used will be outside the bag until that runner uh, runs dry. At least I know that I'm only focusing on a few runners. And as I'm going to do a few steps, put it away, open it up and do a few more steps, later on down the track I'm not going to get confused. Uh, this is the process for a lot slower modeler that's going to take his time and not try to finish this in a couple of days where this build process will be very fresh in their head. As I would have multiple projects on the go, I plan and sort and organise things out that it is possible something won't be touched for uh, days, weeks, and in worst case scenarios, uh, months. So we have the first updating runners uh, prepared, only four of them, about the mount of a high grade. Now unfortunately with the change of plastic and whatnot, this ABS piece just popped out and fell. So uh, being completely uh, separated. Uh, the nubs are really minimal, so that could just be uh, polished off, no problems. Losing it is the issue. 
So in my baggie of uh, extra parts that I'm swapping out, I'm going to pace a minute and uh, make sure things do not get lost later. Or otherwise uh, this entire kit will become useless, especially this being um, the cod piece uh, hip area where the legs attach to the rest of the frame. In our efforts to stay organised, as we explained with the uh, organising of the runners, I've got my modified parts in uh, this bag as well as parts taken from other kits. And this is the bag that's going to collect the parts that we're going to currently work on. So all we're going to do is uh, very, very uh, rough cuts. We'll start with uh, the F runner, and we've got uh, everything laid out. F6, which is uh, this bad boy here. We cut it out. And as you can see here, we're cutting away from the actual part. Nothing too fancy. And I like to leave the nubs there so when I get around to cleaning it, I can cut closer, clean them up, and I know what I'm doing. It's absolutely obvious the nubs are there. And they only get removed when I'm going to remove the nub polish the nub and it's completely gone and if I can't see nubs I know it's been treated if I can see it it obviously has not been treated so we've got our collection of parts here we can work on it as long as we can and as soon as we stop work we bag them and uh, walk away and uh, we've got one bag for active parts we're working on one bag for finished parts and one bag for um, modified parts so we've got two bits of um, pieces. This is uh, polycat material. And this is very, very easy to, well, there we go. This is very easy to deal with, being um, how soft the material is. All you have to do is with a very sharp knife, cut into the material and shave the nub off. Polycaps are generally not very visible, so you're not going to see much of them if they're not very neat or uh, the pinch marks from the polycap is uh, visible. So that's good as done. And then we have our flat surfaces and round surfaces. To deal for flat surface, we've got our nub sticking out. With um, these uh, nippers, so these are your special God Hand style Ultimate 2.0 nippers. Uh, the Ultimate 2.0 is a Hobby Coast subsidiary um, type thing. God Hands is an overseas thing. You can cut, and you can cut again, and it's very, very, very close cut. The problem is, is when you put a coat of paint on, that is still visible. At this point, with a very sharp blade, you're able to go in the base and trim a little more off. And this is, uh, this is an older plastic, so we'll have to go on the table, trim down, and you do multiple cuts instead of uh, one cut. The modern Bandai plastic is a lot uh, softer, easier to cut, though not as um, chemical stable when it comes to uh, enamel thinners. Uh, this one, it's uh, hard as a rock, though when you're removing nubs, you've got the chances of gouging the plastic out. What we also have uh, an issue of and if I can find colored gender marker, which I can, we have a join line. It's got a line going all the way across down there. It's very noticeable. When you put paint on it, it's going to stand out really, really bad. Uh, this will have to be removed as well as the nub mark. And being a flat surface, you get a very fine um, file. Uh, glass files are amazing as you can just lubricate it with water, clean it with solvents, whatever. And you just file away until you're down to bare plastic. And then you get some super fine sandpaper and uh, polish it up to uh, the original shine that um, the Bandai plastic is. Bit of a top coat and that's fine for snappers. The people who paint, 
you could do the same thing. You don't have to worry about uh, the finish too much as a coat of primer and a coat of paint is going to deal with that. So I can feel across my fingernail that the line is still there. If you want to dish out some serious money on files, you want to have a beautiful file that polishes, cuts, removes lines all in a couple of strokes. I sincerely recommend uh, the Tamir files. Very expensive. Uh, once um, exported overseas, you could probably be spending up to $50. And if you only use it on uh, plastic surfaces, you'll get a beautiful polished result. And that would be absolutely ideal for those guys who uh, snap their kits together and put a top coat and rely on the original finish of the surface. So we'll polish it up with this um, discarded 1000, 2000 grid sandpaper. I think it's 1200 because I see a label on the desk in front of me. Gonna wipe it a bit with my jacket. It's very nice. I see no evidence of the nub flash mark or whatever. And uh, we still got on the other side as well there, uh, more nubs, more flash lines. And the flash lines are again only there because you've got two halves of the mold, they inject the plastic. Uh, where the gap is between the two moulds, a tiny bit of plastic just oozes through. And uh, older kits, it's a lot more pronounced. Newer kits, it's not a big deal. If it's a snap kit, you won't even notice it. If it's painted, you will. It's up to you if you want to remove it or not. If it's an inner frame detail, outer frame, you sort of have to go through the instructions and see if it's noticeable enough to deal with or not. Now, we've got a rounded surface here. That's not too hard to deal with. We cut the nub off and we trim it up with the blade. Because it's not a ball, but uh, still a flat surface going all the way around, we can be very careful and very light with the file and just trace um, the surface around and just rub it off. Try to go in one direction and that way we're not wearing off the corners and making them um, filleted, it's still going to be a sharp edge. This could take a little while, though the effort will be very worthwhile. So we're just sanding in one direction, one flow. And we're just covering and um, caressing the surface of the curve. And we just check with our fingernail if there's still a lump, still a slight lump keep going. So we've got a bit of an articulated joint here, just snaps together, no glue, nothing. You've got a bit of a movement there, and that comes apart later for painting. A bit of a modification you can do, very simple, anyone can do it. Here we've got a chamfer, um, in, opposed to having a very sharp edge or corner, there's a bit of a cutout. It's important for the injection moulding machine um, process so that the parts can pop out, but it's also considered a bit of a detail. In mechanical engineering or any item you put together, unless it's been tacked or assembled together, you will not see sharp edges. And so what I've done on this corner here is widen the chamfer by getting a file right on the side of the 45 degree and slowly filed it until it becomes about double in size. So I'll do this one double in size, I'll go that one in double in size, and then the lower chamfers, I'll keep sanding and looking and sanding until they match in size. And realistically, it's not that much of a noticeable detail, but it's uh, really nice. And if you had two of the same kits together, Yours one will obviously look different for some reason. The funniest thing is when you do small things like drill holes and um, widen chamfers and whatnot, people look at your kit, they look at the original Bandai kit and go, what, is yours a bootleg or something? It just doesn't look quite right, yet still pleasant. 
and you can see as I slowly sand it gets bigger and bigger and that's about the size I want so you have to be very careful make sure the file is flat on the surface you don't want to have a weird angle or anything and then right on the chamfer tip polish with some 1000 or 2000 and it gets the surface just as smooth as the rest of the kit and this is small chamfer this is larger chamfer again not so noticeable but um, it's an interesting piece of detail so this is step one all the parts are done cleaned up ready for assembly so excluding part F this is the assembly and this is what the part looks like so it's got the full articulation of the pink and the red bits um, opening and moving about and the grey bit just sandwiches together now the two coloured bits can be removed from their polycap components so the rest of it can realistically be glued together and you've got updating parts down to one part for painting nice and easy so that's it for the day um, these assembled bits are packed away in the bag we're all sorted close the box and we'll start again tomorrow no. so we've got a lot going on here we've got these parts plugged in the polycaps, the moving joints and these moving bits these holes have been widened with a knife and because everything is one colour and these two pop out we can afford to glue it into the one piece so that there's less to paint or less parts to paint so we've got normal cement fill out the little holes cover the areas that are non-moving that are actually going to join this is plastic cement so what it's going to do is melt two surfaces and weld them into the one solid piece the larger the surface area the stronger it is the smaller the surface area the more brittle it is so something small like a peg or a ball joint is not going to work the second fluid I'm putting over everything is extra thin um, quick setting. It's a very quick drying glue that dries almost instantly and you'd have to weld the two um, seams as it's clamped together. Putting it on top of an already wet cement accelerates its drying time. Even though it's not written on the manufacturing instructions. So it's a very quick drying, probably less than 10 minutes. We clamp it all together and this is the piece in one part it's fully articulated moves around and whatnot uh, because the polycaps uh, sorry the um, pegs are really really loose I've wind them with the knife there's no tension so if there's any um, wash or fluids or solvents to go into the seams it's not going to split and break later now there is a seam line here and along there but being an inner frame the rest of the seam cannot be seen here because there's no seam there is a bit of a seam there depending on what's visible when the armour goes on this may or may not need to be filled with putty but uh, this is the piece all together in question so you've got yourself a screw with a Phillips head electrical size most of us don't carry screwdrivers in our toolbox best way around that is if you take your um, type 1 hobby blade out you're able to put the back in it careful not to cut yourself and a bit of trouble the very corner of it can screw it in and this way you don't have to spend the next update how long looking for a screwdriver or just abandoning your build So we've got a joint here that's going to connect to a polycap and these two are pegs, there, or holes, they're going to have pegs go into them. Uh, they are just off by a micromillimeter in uh, fit, they're very tight, any sort of solvent or business will snap them, stress them, whatever. It's always best that they go in uh, loose, at least for the top, so we're going to make it tapered by widening the hole at the top but not the bottom. You can also get a drill bit and widen it out uh, just ever so slightly by one step but I kind of like it to funnel down to a tight bit at the bottom opposed to widening the whole hole. Just be careful not to damage the rest of it. Um, this blade is a bit too tapered. 
Here we go, so I've got a short tapered blade, it's good to have um, a variety of um, blades. And we're just widening the hole a bit, so it just snaps together nicely. We'll just do a test fit, we always test fit everything we change around. Oh, and that's, uh, that's pretty tight, so we'll have a bit of a, a play around until uh, we get it right. These are the two halves. I will not glue them together because I've got the fitting just right. In the event I want to paint in there and get the chair all right and whatnot, uh, it could be separated later for painting. The parts are still sufficiently big and I can re-access uh, this uh, joint if it requires any work from um, post-painting. There you go. There's no side-to-side -side movement in the torso, which I wouldn't expect uh, being a cockpit in there. But uh, the detail is uh, quite nice, it's got a, uh, enough uh, movement around. It is unfortunate the armpit has uh, the screw visible, but uh, it is what it is. It's uh, interestingly enough to me at least. It's, it's tight enough and uh, it looks like there's some interesting points to paint, but we'll see where bits of armour snaps on, so I assume uh, these slightly rised uh, pegs is uh, where things are going to be attached to so we won't go too fancy on the painting of the inner frame since a lot of it will not be exposed. That hole's been widened. The hole inside here has been widened and it just simply clicks into place and it lifts out very easily. After painting, which uh, painting will thicken this up, a little PVA glue will drop, be dropped in there and it'll be stuck in there permanently. But not for now. We want it to be nice and loose because disassembly and reassembly for modifying, painting, whatever is going to be very quick as we go on and we won't risk uh, breaking parts or separating stuff. And it's simple as uh, just putting the knife down the hole and widening and it's just simple a flick with the fingernail. Just be careful not to lose parts and again keep everything in those uh, little sandwich bags. So we've got a wedge in there or a hole and the actual wedge is here and it clips into there and the tension again is very very high. Uh, that tension can be loosened a bit uh, followed by a lick of PVA glue for final assembly. All you have to do is get a bit of a file and uh, sand down the bit of each side ever so slightly oh, where's the camera, there it is uh, be careful not to get the file to touch the actual surface of the piece because then you'll get um, an unwanted dent and uh, tilt or taper the file so it's focusing mostly on the tip of the wedge and once it's um, just sanded a little bit when you put it back in it'll be a lot looser and it pops out so much easier and again it just makes uh, disassembly and reassembly that much easier. To help the two sides also fatten it and require clipping uh, there's a bit of uh, flash so they're going to be filed on the side until they're ever so more flatter. Once you've done that for a while get some one or two thousand grit sandpaper polish the sides and that will be good for painting and the fits will even be looser. So here we've got a slight uh, sink where it's uh, sanded it's uh, quite uh, lighter in colour and it's darker in the centre uh, because after the moulding section uh, a bit of the plastic uh, created a bit of a dimple uh, it's known as an injection mark. They don't normally appear on the surface being an older kit it's uh, not too noticeable on the side of the chest piece uh, still it uh, is um, there and people familiar with the kit will be looking for it if it's been um, removed or not we'll be using a little bit of uh, Mr. Dissolved uh, Putty and realistically it's just as simple as uh, dabbing a bit of putty on uh, each um, little dimple and then lightly sanding it uh, back with uh, finer grit sandpaper so you're looking about four, five, six hundred polish it up with a bit of a thousand and once a bit of primer goes on top it's going to be uh, a lot less uh, noticeable if you have not 
um, sanded the putty away into oblivion. Now while we have the putty uh, out, I've also noticed on our inner frame, uh, the very uh, bottom piece here and here is our uh, seam is going to be uh, a little bit noticeable. So we'll just uh, put um, a little, little, little bit of uh, this stuff and uh, we'll uh, sand it up at a much later session. There we go. So that should do the trick. This would be the look of the end of uh, step one, or nearly the end of it, with the armor removed. And this is the armor so far assembled. And so far all we've done is almost the whole first page, except for two parts, will take two minutes. Now this part was difficult, there was a really strange flash mark all the way around, so that needed to be sanded and filed back, which is good because uh, this needs to click right into there, and it's uh, very tight for a painted piece. So what I'm going to do is uh, trim the peg there, and trim the peg there at an angle, and it should slide in ever so uh, softly and gently just a bare, um, tiny amount of uh, micro-millimetre of plastic actual clicking It'll practically be sitting there and later on it's just glued in after painting like so snaps together holds in and it just pops in and out no problems won't fall out that's the perfect way to do it so, we've just sanded back the putty. Now this is a very soft putty, so files are out of the question. We'll start with uh, not too much of a high grit sandpaper, and uh, while it's wet, you just lightly buff it until the putty doesn't feel raised on the finger. Once it feels flat, you get a finer sandpaper, around 1,000, 1,500, 2,000 grits, and you just polish until when you run the flat of your finger, not your thumbnail across, it feels flat, so that little uh, tiny sink, it's uh, covered with putty and the rest of the plastic contours or flattens to the profile of the shape. We also had a bit of a um, seam here. We've done the same thing. Uh, my fingernail still catches on it, so we're going to follow it up with a second round of our putty and the next section or session we're going to um, sand it a second time until uh, when we uh, run our finger or fingernail across it does not dig in. Normally I would have uh, put for a seam line a bit of super glue to harden it together, didn't do that, that was a bit of a mistake. A harder putty should probably have been used uh, due to the fact that it is a seam but it just felt uh, so flat, um, it was a bit of a mistake in uh, the selection of putty. It's good to have more than one putty on hand. Widening the hole is just simple putting a knife in there, spinning it. But if it's got a shallow end where it could go um, all the way through to the other side, you just uh, nick the very uh, edge with the blade and you spin the part around or you spin the knife around. Sometimes spinning the part around is easier. So the base of it is much wider and there we go, it just snaps into place, nice and easy. Widening the hole is just simple putting a knife in there, spinning it. But if it's got a shallow end where it could go um, all the way through to the other side, you just uh, nick the very uh, edge with the blade and you spin the part around or you spin the knife around. Sometimes spinning the part around is easier. Until the base of it is much wider and there we go. It just snaps into place nice and easy. Working on the head and uh, we've chucked in the strike nor face instead of the regular one. 
Don't forget with the V fins and any of those bit of things, these things got quite a few fins. Get a file and sand the tips in a contoured way, holding one tip and sanding one tip at a time, not both of them. And sand it to a bit of a point, so it's quite pointy and sharp where the other one's blunted. Uh, Mr. Kawaguchi has said that this is done for um, the sake of children, so they don't hurt themselves and take their eye out. It's also an injection moulding thing. It's easier to cast round stuff than flat stuff. And it's not too much, it's just a bit of work. It's a bit pointier. And just at a quick glance, it's uh, going to look a lot more interesting. Nubs removed. Peg holes widened, V fins and pointy bits sharpened. Insides look pretty interesting. For some reason there's a container of thinner next to me. I don't know why. So I dropped a bit of a nub in there. And you can actually see it melt in such a fascinating manner. It's just uh, pulling this uh, pigment at the very bottom of the well. I assure you it's looking uh, rounded off and quite brittle if I pull it out or just uh, disintegrate. So the visor obstructs the eyes a bit and because it's got a weird hook thing, it's very carefully with my blade I'm shaving off excess plastic. We fold a bit of sandpaper, Flatten it out by sanding it at the chamfered angle it's at. Um, you can get needle files that will fit in there. I don't know needle files anymore. I don't find much use for it as I can carve in strategic places. It's a slight um, abnormality. And we'll just work for it to be completely symmetrical. Now I've got this raised bit here, that also obscures the face a bit, so at the angle of that chamfer is, we're just going to keep flattening it and checking it and flattening it until once we assemble it all together and recheck, we like the look of it. So it's going to be a multi-step uh, process. So what I've just did was using a, a pin vise. We've uh, drilled holes either side, so they've made them about two times bigger. Uh, when uh, wash and paint goes in them, it will be uh, far more noticeable. Just drilled some holes into this piece, which is a pity, it's uh, not even noticeable. I should have test fitted it. But uh, this is the head, with the little modifications. And those seams were re-sanded and... Um, filled. Uh, this piece I've uh, made far too loose but that's alright, I won't lose it. And we'll move on to the next section. And we just covered the steps. Absolutely love the uh, glass finish on these uh, runners. So we still got things in storage bags. We're still keeping organized with our large parts counts. Um, some stuff is still in bags because they're unused or barely used and just makes finding uh, runners and parts very very quick and we've got the shoulder bits cut out ready for cleaning so a couple of valves in there it's uh, worse for wear I poked it uh, for poker it's soft as a gummy bear it's um, very safe to assume it's not doing too well another day uh, another way to see how everything is organized and the progress is good. Three well organized bags. Mixing some two part putty. We've had to fill the gap uh, where the armor mask wasn't quite uh, fitting. Uh, after a few days drying we'll uh, sand it up nicely. Got all the nubs cleaned up. Peg holes widened, uh, the parts applied, and it is completely assembled. And rinse and repeat the three runners needed, parts cut out, 
all knobs removed as well as flash around these two parts. Sub-assembled, uh, the holes there has been slightly uh, widened, going to cement them together. Uh, Dante has uh, chucked this under my nose so I will give the U-Star cement a go. Glues together alright. It's uh, very, very, very thick and stringy, so I'd imagine it would be slow to dry, but does the job if it's affordable. And uh, that's done. Uh, cement's very oozy, has a tendency of uh, leaving marks, but because it oozes out from the seams, uh, that's the perfect sort of stuff to uh, sand back, and that's your uh, seam lines sorted for your um, gunpla type requirements. All the parts are cut out. Next day the head is uh, pulled apart and the milli part in the uh, face shield has been sanded and polished. The face mask is a much better fit now and a very interesting look. The seams on this pieces after the use of the U-Star ABS cement has uh, hardened quite well and extruded out a bit um, after filing and sanding we've pretty much got a sealed uh, seam. Very good for small tight fitting components uh, such as a modern day Gundam kit. Not so good for other applications. Uh, just be advised. Knobs and flash removed. Holes widened, glued slathered and glued together like that. Done! These components are cut out, nubs removed and the peg holes hollowed out inside the part. Again, all glued in one piece, that seems need a bit of sanding. And that's only two pieces to paint, opposed to only one component. Arm assembly so far. These came out great. Now, these not so good. The seam is absolutely ugly, but luckily it's covered um, each side with armour, so I will not do anything about it. Armour all cut out. Notice that these two pieces has a flash mark all the way around it. All cleaned up, including the flash marks. And this is this whole page complete so far. Now, what I've done is not included the hands. I wait until uh, the weapon assembly occurs so the correct combination of hands can be done to the pose that I like. Not happy with one of the sanded seams, so we'll be using this stuff. Nice and easy, just paint it on with a Q-tip where it's nice and uh, thick and white, not transparent. Forgot about these pieces. Crazy amount of nubs, cleaned up. Whole hollowed out, snaps together, looks good. Forgot about these pieces, crazy amount of nubs, cleaned up, whole hollowed out, snaps together, looks good. Drilled a hole right through just to make it look better. Small details like that so overall do get picked up. One of the holes are drilled right through the top of the arm shoulder bit. Uh, I painted the whole kit with basically pearlescence. Uh, the white white part is pearlescent white, and the uh, blue part I think is metallic blue. The right part, uh, right part is uh, what I did is I undercoated with black. Then I put uh, SMS right on the, on the top, and then I went to some pearlescent red. But uh, we ran into some problems with the. Mr. Carter's pro lesson right, I think maybe it's the wrong thing or something, uh, but something definitely went wrong, so you can see the surface is not as smooth as I wanted, so yeah, maybe I'll have to just keep testing on the paint, so maybe I will find a solution one day. Uh, we have a finished arm. Very articulated. Uh, we'll give this an attempt. Yay!
Who? These uh, bits come from another model kit. These uh, bits are cut out. One week later, places are glorious and as is normal. Cool boat. Uh, my kit was found deboxed, boxed but everything's there so that's pretty cool. Current parts, finished parts, uh, something parts, I don't remember. Seam lines has been re-sanded a second time and assembled. Now these parts are finished. Oh no, ejector marks. What are you doing, Bandai? All the surface is not visible. It does not matter. But putty could be applied to that if it was a surface detail, so no harm done. Nicely cleaned up, no nubs. This is all the poly caps inside, so you can see the points of mounting and articulation or armor connection. Sometimes uh, two parts, especially if there's a lot of poly caps, when you let go the seam likes to split. So you want to clamp it down, use clamps, use alligator clips, use rubber bands, whatever, or hold it with your fingers for a period of time until the glue starts to set. Uh, in theory, it's still going to probably um, split at a later date. Normally, uh, this is definitely a candidate of running super glue down and uh, putting it. The detail around here is uh, very troublesome. But this is all buried under um, armor. So it's not going to be visible if there's a slight crack. So we might just have to live with uh, this one. This is the seam we're left with. It is approximately half to a third of a mil. I think I'm going to put my really thin stuff inside, sand it back and uh, do that about two over. And uh, it's just in case a few mil of inner frame is exposed. So we'll definitely cover that. I smeared some ABS cement thickly around the ball joint to help uh, loosen up some material and force it down the seam for a better weld. And the cosmetic stuff, I've just uh, put down the Mr. Dissolved putty. Uh, the surface doesn't matter. It looks pretty uniform, so I'll leave that there intentionally. Rear skirt armor, the one pinched from the Strike Knoll. We're going to drill that out. Now, to make sure it's absolutely center, the very uh, tip of the drill is going to stick in that tiny hole or dent I made in the center. That's as easy as sticking a knife into that and just twirling until there's an opening. And we're able to do a very straight drill right the way through without being crooked. Holes wand, armoured attached. And there you go, snapped together. Parts all cut out. The detail of the thruster and the bottom of this skirt armour is very lazy. I'm not a big fan of it at all. Hard to paint, hard to do anything with it to make it look interesting besides cut it open. So we're going to cut it completely um, open and insert these. Using a hobby saw we have made two slits. Series of holes drilled. Doesn't matter if they're straight as long as they're nowhere near where we actually want the line to be as this will be chopped up and carved and sanded into a nice flat line. Followed by a very messy break. That was tidying up a bit with the knife. We'll do the final polishing cut. And we are finished. Now there's a bit of a drill scar and a small cut mark. I'm going to hit that up with a bit of putty from the inside, let it dry, sand it tomorrow and fit. If you do it neat enough, uh, that's alright. Uh, if you do it a tad sloppy like I've done, not a big deal, it just takes a little extra time. So we're going to make it fit something like that. Uh, putty's definitely going to be needed. And it didn't quite fit, so I had to chop it down with a knife and sand it up. At the moment, uh, the fit's going to be very delicate. Uh, too little contact for glue to work. We'll mix some two-part putty, uh, fill out the skirt armour and uh, just sit them in, blend it up a bit. My choice of putty is Milliput. We've got the two halves, cut rather than pinch because uh, this component will chemically change and harden out and uh, destroy the whole um, stick. This is an excellent consistency.
We've got it all filled. You can see it sticking out the other end. Got a rough fit right there. Bit of super glue just on the putty to bond the bit on. And then we make sure they're the same. The goal is to make sure that the part sinks and flushes in with the rest of the armour. Um, there is a large gap and rough bit between the putty, the armour and uh, the thruster. The thruster is just not meant to fit in there. A smaller or better fitting part would have done way better. But I wanted this bit no matter what. We're going to let this dry. We're going to give it a decent amount of sanding next time. Um, we're going to putty uh, the area between the thruster and the side armor. A yeah, bit of touch up, a bit of uh, further sanding, and it's done. It's a uh, very little uh, edge to have to worry about. So the work is not uh, immense, but it's going to definitely be interesting. Going back here, um, the putty sunken, so I'm just going to put another layer on it, see what happens tomorrow. Today's work so far, including the back. Another advantage of storing them in these little plastic bags is uh, the sculpted putty and the wet putty is not going to be disturbed or rub off onto uh, the other clean parts. When sanding the Mr. Dissolved putty, I like to make sure that the sandpaper is uh, quite soggy and soft so I'll ho hold it in water for about 30 seconds to a couple of minutes. So that seam sanded up quite nicely. Uh, the two rounds of putty before sanding was a very, very good idea. It's uh, nice and flush and polished up well. Now I remember a criticism that this ball joint is very weak due to being two parts and snaps easily. So I'm going to reinforce the tips with super glue and let a date drill right away through and put a brass rod. That will prevent any breakage through the high tension of uh, the legs. Using uh, low grit sandpaper we have uh, cut the rough area so it's absolutely flat. We'll polish it a bit more and we'll putty the other side. Got it all puttied up. Once that's sanded up we'll do a follow up with the dissolved putty. Uh, polish it and prime it for any imperfections. Besides that it is finished. Another day Another million dollars. Another journey on the workbench. We've got up the steps of primer to, not primer, putty to remove. Uh, sandpaper will make a quick job of that. I didn't go overboard on the sanding because there's parts of it that still needs uh, putty work. I'm going to chuck a bit of colour on it or uh, primer and go for a second round. I love it when you look at the shame that the uh, plastic and the putty is a smooth and it's just a part of the one plane. There are still craters and mistakes, but I know where to fix them. Round two for putty. So a hole has been drilled all the way through the ball joint, so a brass rod can be inside. Being in two halves, it's not going to snap as all the tension is going to go off the brass and not the plastic. That's snug inside. And the fit is so tight it virtually holds itself, so yeah. A little super glue will be capped at the tip just to seal it in. So this will need a second round of putty, and this one has a brass rod all the way through. Two of them overlapping as they're not centered, and it cannot break under any circumstances. Round two of putty will not be using as harsh a grit sandpaper next time. Round two of putty will not be using as harsh a grit sandpaper next time. Had to plug in the action base plug. While we're waiting to dry, we'll uh, work on these steps in tangent of uh, that being scratch built. Parts are cut out. This part had a flash line all the way around, all cleaned up, holes widened, sub-assembled, all assembled, and the top bits uh, that are going to be visible are covered with super glue to be uh, putty and sanded later. So we're going into our second session, 
Now we've missed uh, one day. All we've done is applied a little filler on these uh, seams that will be visible above the armor that snaps on. And we've done our final layer of a thinner dissolved putty on the skirt armor. These seam lines are polished and completely filled. Polished up the extra thin putty. You can see the marbling of all the different uh, colours and products which is fairly amusing. We'll put a coat of primer and see if any last final touch ups are required. Coat of white paint. Now we can see that the errors or uh, imperfections are at a minimum. Another round of uh, dissolved putty and sanding should reduce it further. Moving on, parts are cut out. The nubs are cleaned and removed, the peg holes widened. Both components are attached. Both halves are glued oh, together. Parts are chopped out. Nubs removed and holes slightly widened for easy snapping. Another day, another bunch of kits in plastic, another rice bowl, and we've finally finished scratch building these two pieces. Quick review. So we've got some god hands here. It's rusted to the shit house and it doesn't retract again. You can see the spot rust, it's fucked. Same vintage Ultimate Nipper 2.0, still going strong. Yeah, not a big fan of the god hand. Back to this step. Just before assembly. Just before assembly. So it's all glued together. I put a bit of super glue on the seam. I will just need a bit of putty and we'll sand it back at another time. We've just uh, filled the seams on areas that could potentially be visible with uh, putty over the super glue. So sanding the putty off these uh, legs and uh, seams, I've been uh, struggling with this Tamiya used uh, uh, poly sandpaper crap. The idea of sandpaper and sanding is to use uh, quality, the best you can afford, especially from a hardware store or an auto store, uh, the best stuff they got, the actual proper coarse sandpaper sandpaper. You buy a range from around um, the 120, 180 area all the way through to the uh, thousands and using them in steps you will sand so much quicker. I did uh, two components that were fairly uh, equal uh, with the uh, those two uh, grids. The part took 20 minutes. Uh, the other bit, uh, this four uh, stepping down from each other, about two, three minutes. So when it comes to uh, speed and getting the best uh, finished um, possible with seams and nubs and uh, flash and anything, uh, I have a uh, program, have labelled short cut out uh, sandpaper and it will just be a better result and it will be quicker. Even though it takes more time in the long run to set up your sandpaper in the actual work, it's a lifesaver. So we've sanded all the putty. Now with uh, sanding putty, nubs, whatever, and our range of sandpaper, it's all about our good technique. The coarser, the lighter you go, the finer, the harder you go. There's a few areas I want to re-go up with follow-up putty. So you can see that I've painted a red line with a Gundam marker. I'm going to put a dissolved putty on top of it. Sand it 24 hours later. And due to all of the uh, seam line removal work, I've uh, labelled it to be primed early to check, do follow up, sand and then it's ready to go with the rest of the pe um, painted pieces. So we do know uh, a lot like the uh, frontal armour that we've modified, that this will be a troublesome piece that will need some follow up. The dissolved putty has been applied on the seams with the Gundam marker. It's um, pretty uh, smooth, sort of like cream, just a cotton bud applies it. Parts have been cut out. The bottom one has its uh, flash removed. The top still contains its flash. 
not too noticeable but when you move around and you see the sheen dance and the paint that will be extremely noticeable so time was spent removing it parts are all cleaned peg holes widened the pink bits are cut out too I do forget colours, the pink is done shit I cleaned the wrong bit seams all sanded ready for priming parts cut out and they got these on the go because they're the last pieces on the tree holes loosened up and all snapped together we've uh, primed all the bits the armor flaps uh, very very well uh, there are some kneading up and uh, re-putting that is required on the legs but that should be a problem I think a bit of water got stuck so it left these uh, strange bubbles but it's uh, nothing that can't be fixed Putty has been applied, it will need to be sanded one more time, then primer for a second time. Hopefully it should be good for painting after this, and we'll move on to the rest of the building. And we've uh, got it all on the uh, codpiece lap uh, armour, it's looking good and uh, different. Seam lines have been removed for a second time we'll do some airbrushing soon all cleaned up nubs removed, holes widened, we'll cement these two pieces together everything assembled today going to be spraying but I don't want to spray on these parts I do have uh, this pretty sweet aluminium airbrush this is surface of 500 Last of the sanding on the legs, and we'll do a bit of spraying, spraying away. It's looking really, really schmick. Uh, there's only one fault left. I may buff it back and spray one last time, but I probably won't spray until it goes to final <laughs> primer and paint. When these two bits were glued together, there was a bit of uh, excess um, plastic run out. That means the seam is definitely sealed, though it needs to be cleaned up. So we'll quickly uh, sand that up, but it's uh, tight enough with the ABS cement. No follow-up putty is required. Got to finish the feet. Feet bits cut out. Snap together all the parts in picture. These bits cut it up. All cleaned up. We'll do this step. Parts cut out. Cleaned up the hole slightly widened. All attached. Slowly applying armor parts. Cut out. To the left is cleaned. Trimmed up the edges to fit in the hole. Attached. I was going to glue it down, but I think I'll paint it a slightly different colour like champagne or copper. All parts chopped out. All cleaned up. Pegs trimmed. All attached and easily <coughs> removed. Makes sense to have these uh, sections finished. We'll finish off the leg. The parts have been cut out. So we are... Uh, Three months later, and we're finally picking this guy up. Have to help out a bit with the uh, store, so we haven't had a look inside for a little while. Everything's nicely organised in uh, the baggies. That one's definitely done. She's finished, and with how things are organised, you can see the bits that still have the nubs on it. And I think that happens to be the steps that I'd be up to. So uh, this guy. And we'll have a quick little work on the look at the work area. And you can see everything is nicely tidied. Being uh, worked on with the project. That's a Lego whorehouse for some reason. It's a very, very long story. And the shop's not looking too bad. We've got these four parts to clean up. All parts cut, trimmed and sanded back with a file. Attach them to this component. Are you really sorry? Are you truly sorry? I bet you're sorry, yeah? Yeah, you're very sorry. Nicely assembled. 
We've got these bits and pieces, all parts cut out, all beautifully cleaned, polished and connecting holes widened, assembled, snaps in quite uh, tightly, uh, the fitting is uh, very very good. This is a hole two pages ago, I don't know why I never finished assembling it, better do it now. Now all tidied up to break up the monotony. Some interesting toys laying around. Quick snap fit, obviously very easy to remove due to the loosening of the parts. And we've got some snap fit legs. So this process is complete. Straight in the bag you go. So we've got some final assembly, we'll do that much later. Though we'll have a look at uh, assembling the weapons and the hands for the weapons backpack that sort of thing so we'll focus on these panels first freshly chopped it's all uh, tidied up I have to admit the uh, inner piece pieces uh, molding is uh, very impressive it all goes together as some sort of uh, container and here it is uh, closed and assembled and it's all assembled with the hip codpiece region. Uh, the rifle is going to be assembled now, so these are the steps. So we're doing the rifle modification. This is a 1.6 machine gun, or assault rifle, that I fully intend to kitbash an existing strike gun. So it's going to appear that it's holding a much larger menacing rapid fire weapon opposed to the single shot thing that appears in the anime. We'll be borrowing quite a bit of detail from the original rifle and just practically decorating the existing one. The 1.6 realistic rifle is made by 4D, a Chinese uh, company. It retails around the uh, 5 to 10 dollar area. It's a kit within its own, though I think uh, the size of it is very suitable looking as an oversized uh, weapon on master grades. This is the weapon that pulls apart like so. I'll intend to keep it like that. There are some seams that need to be cleaned up. We'll do that quickly. The breech is also articulated, so that is very cool. So we've separated everything. Uh, the rifle has had its imperfections uh, removed. And the Bandai rifle has been uh, chopped up. We'll uh, assemble the handle and scope to cut off and the sides will be added to the existing sides. Glued these two halves together. These were chopped up, but they were cleaned up so they could be applied. So we've uh, putted up those areas and all we have to do is once dry, sand all the putty and start assembling and putting further. So we've got the uh, gun uh, the side uh, bit has the rifle detail glued on, uh, the scope will be pinned on the top and the little trigger is being added by the gun handle. Uh, this will be separated. All the putty, um, ejector pin marks and whatnot has been puttied up. Uh, this component will require more work, this requirement part will also require uh, putty and it will just uh, come together a little glue, most of it snap fit. We're going to let the rifle dry and we'll uh, work on the daggers. Now, talking about drying, I'm here for a few hours. So I'll hit it up with some uh, Molotov liquid uh, chrome and let it sit on the skewers for a few hours before I put it in the box and let it sit for a few weeks before a top coat. Cleaned up and ready for application. Uh, Molotov can sit on a bare surface and hold a reasonable amount of adhesion without a primer. It's beautifully shiny, quite nice and thick and it self levels and gets rid of the uh, application marks. There's one tiny dust dimple but it is what it is. Um, we're not going to touch it for many hours. Gently put it in the box and again in a couple of uh, weeks time we'll uh, paint the other end but by then painting may or may not have already started on this project as I only work on it for a few hours a couple of times a week 
the gun is made out of ABS, reclaimed cheap ABS, so it's not the easiest material to work in, with a uh, liberal amount of uh, Tamir normal white tip cement, uh, this one, we're able to glue it into place and allow it the maximum amount of time for it to bond melting both surfaces and hoping for the best fusion possible. Using a hobby saw we have to cut off a tiny amount of the hand cover of the rifle to match the bandai bit. We've cut out two equal parts of uh, milliput to fill in the massive gaps we have. Bit of rough uh, putty applied, we just need to do a bit of sanding. The pins are put in, made marks. We will drill holes later. I think this is enough work on the rifle. We'll uh, finish it off at the next session and keep going with the kit. We shall be working on the shield now. Parts all ready for cleaning and assembly. Now this is very interesting. Where I put the green Gundam circle, inside you can see a very very faint donut or circle. On the other side, you can see some very, very clear ejector pin marks. Two in the middle there doesn't seem to be uh, visible at all, which is interesting. Anyway, when you paint, it's going to come through. And what ejector pin marks are are these uh, little pins inside the mould. When the part is uh, injection moulded, and it has a second to cool down and the moulds automatically open on those surfaces the little pins will push into the plastic and pop the runner out uh, onto a production line to get wrapped in plastic and thrown in your box because the part is still a bit hot it's going to have a raised bit on the front surface where you want it to look good so using a little bit of dissolved uh, putty uh, you'll be able to cover it up which it may or may not be noticeable after a round of uh, primer and paint. So in uh, competitions, things like your Gunplay Builders World Cup or whatnot, uh, they look out for those sort of things in very, very close inspections, commissions. It's up to you if you want to go to the effort to cover them up or not. Uh, I've got all the nubs removed, nice and clean. Uh, I can dry assemble. And we've got those ejector pins covered and we shall sand them the next session. Uh, once assembled, I've learned that I absolutely hate the colouring, so I'm going to invert the uh, German grey dark colour uh, with the pink. I think that would look much better. A little uh, writing with the Gundam marker will remind me to do that uh, before priming when sorting colours. I suppose we'll cut out the handle for the knife, put it in storage, finish off our shield. Back end parts with polycap. This particular part has a flush mark that goes all the way around. Uh, very annoying, so we'll sand it off. This piece took a stupid amount of time to clean, but it's good. Oh, this is terrible. This bloody thing has a flash mark all the way around it as well. Oh, this is terrible. This bloody thing has a flash mark all the way around it as well. Oh, this is terrible. This bloody thing has a flash mark all the way around it as well. All cleaned up. Also taking a ridiculous amount of time to fix. Holes slightly widened for the pegs. Parts all clean and tidy. All sorted, looking very good assembled. Uh, that's not very good. That's a lot better, filled with epoxy putty. Bit of a reminder to do so for paint marker parts cut out for the knife as well as cleaned up nubs. Sub-assembled, uh, the hand will have to be glued together for integrity and strength. There may be a seam. Done with some putty in the seam line. Second lot is all cleaned up, going to slap it together. Sub-assemble, cemented together and done. Now we're getting into the backpack and we'll focus on this bit and getting this assembly done. Airbrush and gun is all loaded up. 
got the whole assembly together this bit and that bit is glued together these two are just snapped due to colour separation next batch of parts cut out for now this session I've uh, got quite a bit done and there's a lot of things in this uh, baggie that I need to sand uh, we'll have a play next week Bandai used to give these stickers away when you buy stuff for promotions limited edition, very old, kinda cool after a few days drying we're going to be sanding up these uh, parts so they could have a layer of uh, primer to see if they're any good we've just drilled a hole through so we'll just sand it up next time we've just putted it up cleaned it, sanded it and we put a final layer of liquid putty so one final buff and this part should be done this is all cleaned up We'll throw some primer on it to see if there's any further imperfections. Uh, still a bit of fresh putty on the scope, but we can deal with that. Booth on, a few airbrush loaded, Mr. Seps at 1500, and thinner. Airbrush and gun is all loaded up. All primed, a couple imperfections. I will mark it out, putty it again, and uh, repeat the process tomorrow. Because both the rifle and the modifications I've done using the Bandai rifle are a bit on the rough side, there was a lot of putty work, marking out imperfections with the Gundam marker and whatnot. So we'll let that dry, sand, prime. We might have to do this a couple of times. Every session doing so will be quicker and quicker. Seam sanded. The uh, hand armor has been applied. Looks to be completely finished. So the middle part's been sanded back and we've got a nice smooth surface all the way around. Sanded the shield, so that's all smooth and nice. Uh, at the airbrush with Dante today. Everything's dried, ready for quite a bit of sanding and another spray of primer. The fitting's getting very tight so we're drilling it ever so slightly uh, wider. After the paint has been painted on these rods, it will fit in these holes a lot better. So it's all uh, sanded. I had one bit broke off, I have to re-glue. We will prime it a second time, see the last of the imperfections and uh, deal with them as they come. So this is looking a lot better and a lot more like a single rifle. Because re-gluing is involved, we'll have to reinforce the bits of super glue. I shall allow it to harden for a little while before playing with it. Back to the build, all the nubs are nicely cleaned and polished off, and we have widened the holes. Sub-assembly, snapped together. Parts removed, achieving this step, achieving this step. What the hell is that? That dent is huge. The other piece doesn't have it, so it must be a fault during the molding. It's got a tiny, tiny, tiny dimple there. But this one is deep as. It's going to have to be uh, marked and uh, filled with uh, putty. Don't tell you, I want my money back. <laughs> Using a Gundam marker, I uh, labelled exactly where it is so putty can go on it. Knobs are removed. Fill the dimples with putty. Using squadron and a Q-tip, we just covered the area. It is mounted a bit high, but can be sanded back later. These two holes have been widened. These parts are sub-assembled like so. All assembled. We shall be doing this uh, step. Cutting these pieces out first. All the parts are chopped out. Gave you a view of the part storage. We'll get back to this in a week's time. So we've done the final amount of putty work a week later. I uh, re-superglued the handle 
and in theory should sand it back, prime it and be good for painting. We've just sanded back the putty. We put some liquid putty on top as a follow up and sand it back so it is finished. Going back to the backpack, this wing has an enormous amount of either pin marks or sinkholes which all need to be covered. Uh, this is very surprising to see this from uh, this uh, vintage of a Gundam kit. Got these puttied on both sides. Now these, I just can't believe how bad these wings are. I had to sharpen uh, the top corner and the little hook underneath as they looked a bit weird all round. The inside has been widened to uh, click it all together. For some reason this edge has a raised uh, lip, sort of like there's a leak in the mould or something. It needs to be sanded back. This part had a flash all the way around it, it needed to be removed. Everything is uh, cleaned up, holes widened, uh, pegs ready to go, a couple of parts are uh, puttied. Once it's all sanded I can uh, snap it down together, but won't do it today. The gun is all sanded up, we'll chuck primer on it again. All painted, only down to one imperfection, a god hand nipper rack. So we can see all the seams, ejector pin marks, and imperfections are gone. This will look uh, very good with a coat of uh, gun metal. Scope did need uh, one more round of putty. After that, it's fine. It's just on the underneath. It won't be really seen, but just in case. The liquid putty has been sand back, polished, and these parts can be assembled. All the dimples have been removed. Wings are beautifully assembled. Wings are attached to the backpack. Cut of gluing done. Parts are all cut out. Where the circled area are ejector pin marks or sinks, they will require to be filled with putty. A little too much glue was used and it oozed out slightly. It will need to be sanded back. It's all uh, sanded up and looking pretty good now. So this is an example of a clean piece. Uh, there is still a bit of stretching and uh, stress in the plastic. Uh, the sanding will make it not appear in the paintwork, but you can see where the white dots are left over is where those uh, dimples or um, the plastic sagged a bit. So yeah, that's uh, very disappointing on uh, Bandai's part, but not too hard to clean up. Considering the age of the kit and how ambitious it was for its time, I uh, can't really complain much as uh, these imperfections do not appear as often. It still does, but you just really need to look out for them, especially in the primer stage. All of these parts have been cleaned up. That's taken a while. All right, these little gaps there has been widened with uh, sandpaper. All assembled. Quick check on the organization of the different bags. It's uh, very easy to follow. And the runners are still grouped even though they're absolutely almost exhausted. New set of parts all cut out. Holes widened for easier connection. We have finally cleaned up these parts. I've decided I'm going to modify by chopping these little chamfers off and having it a bit more pointed. I can't believe the amount of crazy work that this uh, required, including fixing the dimples, widening the holes, and doing the final assembly. These do definitely look cool when they are together. All the parts cut out. Don't know if we covered it. This is the final assembly of the backpack wing thruster bells. All the parts are cleaned up. 
As per the instructions, you make sure you get the correct orientation around for the top dome. So it's the chamfer is facing the long wing. And these are fully assembled. The end where it connects has been hand painted enamel chrome. It isn't quite exactly the same as the Molotow, but it blends in and it's not too noticeable upon closer inspection. This is going to click in anyway, so we want something tougher like an enamel. We will flip it and paint the other side at a later date. So this is the very last page. And assemble the figure and these two bits. These parts are cut out. So we've uh, widened the holes so it fits together very well and because it's flush but the panels meant to be visible this half has been chamfered so the panel can look a lot deeper a lot wider and there's going to be quite noticeable uh, lines present after painting that our cement is not going to cover up yet still leave a slight mistake looking line the two surfaces have been glued together and I want to fill the seam here, so I put a bit of super glue, let that dry, and add a uh, putty. So that seam is filled, we just got to wait till that dries and sand it tomorrow. Uh, these are the beam sabers, the parts have been cut out. All cleaned up, ready for gluing. So. All assembled. I uh, may as well build and paint the figure as well, so we'll uh, cut it out and glue it together mix of legitimate uh, Bandai uh, decals I'm using the Zeta set as some of the uh, vintage signs are very nostalgic and the crazy modeler seed ones which uh, go for individual particular Gundams in 1100, uh, 1144 and some could probably pass for 160 so these are all the spare parts now, I'm pretty sure this is important I'm actually positive this is involved in connecting all the wings and stuff together put that aside and we'll put these in a bag uh, we won't uh, dispose of them or we'll put them in the bits box until uh, painted and assembled so cleaning this up it's got some pretty uh, crazy flash so that's all gonna have to be sanded back beautifully sanded no trace of it though we still have to do the nubs done we'll start cleaning this one up Painted the other sides of the daggers. In a couple of hours they'll be dry. Let them uh, mature for a lot longer. And they're good. So it's all cleaned up. Assembled. And glued together. The putty has been sanded. And then followed up with uh, Mr. Liquid uh, Putty. So if everything assembled. We're going to do the final assembly and have it together to see if it stands and there's uh, no issues or problems uh, before we paint. And what's left in the box? Very little. All the parts that are in the bags. Backpack assembled. Fuck, my V friend broke. So these are some bits that won't stick on. And a couple of other bits and pieces. And... This is the guy snapped together. It's not too bad. There's some things that need to be glued, but uh, it, it comes together in an okay fashion. Some areas is a tad tight. I just have to sand the balls for the uh, leg sockets slightly as I thicken them with super glue. Besides that, it's time for a strip down <coughs> and start priming. Probably a uh, color separation too. Uh, the ball joint sanded down a bit from the super glue thickening it up and it fits perfectly now. A bit on the tight side but that's better than nothing. I did forget that I put a brass rod in it for stability. Last two pieces uh, that were scuffed up were sanded and puttied now uh -huh. for sorting. So we got our items that we're not going to paint including the daggers and clears, poly caps and connecting joints that are hidden. These are all the bits and pieces uh, sorted out, except for that one that needs to be uh, sanded again. Uh, gun metal for the rifle, uh, soft pink for the armor, uh, red for the armor tipping, inner frame, I haven't decided what I'm doing with that. I thought these would be cool to be a copper because they're not too uh, noticeable. 
and he's going to be black going into German grey. So we've got them all bagged and we'll just pick out each bag, mount them up, mask them off, paint, weather, put in the bag and then go to the next one. So we're going to start with the copper bits um, all mounted and we'll uh, prime them. Uh, this is uh, some Mr. Surface of 1500, we'll prime with this. Alright, so it's a simple case of just dusting on, nothing serious. Half um, thinner, half primer, and about 5% of uh, retardants. And it's going on really, really, really smooth using Artistar retardant this time. So nothing special at all. Stop. So these uh, parts are all being primed. So with the copper pieces, we've mounted them, primed them, black, sort of didn't work out too well, so the paint was uh, stripped in Ultimate Paint Remover by SMS, uh, repainted, painted in uh, bronze or copper, a little bit of shading, a little bit of weathering, top coat, wash, a bit of pencil work and top coated again for final assembly. So we've got it sitting in that bag, fully dried, but the next step, the red bits and all the other bag bits. Uh, we've got a whole red painted on all the red pieces for the shadowing. Got the uh, Neo Zeon going all along here. Hello. And in the distance, uh, a lolly in a wheelchair. Yeah, let that sink in for a while. So over the dark brown, we have shaded red, so we've got a bit of a gradient effect going. A bit of shading with light pink, and got a gradient like that. So using a bit of uh, coalescent red, we have uh, coated everything quite liberally, so it's got an interesting sheen. So the thrusters have been darkened with clear black. Everything received a clear coat. And that's what we're looking at. Pretty shiny. Red pieces are dried to the touch. We'll allow that to chemically uh, harden. And the gun is being painted now. It is based in black by Guy Notes. So we painted the gun. SMS gun metal. Uh, bits of burnt iron around the vents and some detail. Smoke black at the bottom, build of silver on the top, all glazed in automotive uh, gloss. Be a few more gloss coats until it's nice. Using a brown wash, we panel lined everything and we'll be using these makeup pencils to do the edges. Using uh, a weathering pencil, we have weathered the edges. After the previous day, we have done a wash, and you can see that the edges are all slightly back black, and you get a few bits of uh, very light paint chipping that is quite subtle, and it's still very very glossy. Uh, the figure has two brass rods pinned to the feet, so it can be attached to an action base using a pin vise and super glue. Uh, the pin should be 1.5 millimeters. So we've got all the red pits painted, shaded, weathered, top coat and the gun as well. After a bit of uh, hardening they can go back in the bag. Now we'll prepare the light pink white parts. First we'll mount them. And that is a lot of parts. Since the white seem to be very boring, a definition is required, multiple shades shall be applied. Everything has been painted, sprayed, a light grey, and the figure is somewhere in there primed. The second shade of grey has been applied. Using pieces as an example, you can see there's intermittent shading on some surfaces in a modular manner, and the depths have been even uh, darkened, uh, the lower bit's quite dark. We'll do some highlighting with... 
the white has uh, been highlighted, so got three tones of uh, grey to get a white effect. Got a touch of uh, thruster soot. So using the SMS granite, we've got this very subtle pearl pink going across uh, all the parts. Did a second coat of the granite crystal and the pink is really noticeable. And painted some details on the back of the head. Oh, we did a bit of a panel line wash, including the bits there. Uh, the figure's been panel line washed so I can hand paint the details easier. So I did a bit of edge weathering and a final clear coat to these pieces. Large amounts of the sum here too. Is all the parts together. The hardest colour and largest selection of parts, the light pink is uh, finished and I have to say I'm pretty happy how they've uh, come out. They're quite diverse and uh, should not make the kit uh, boring whatsoever. Light pink mounted applied oxidized red so a bit of pink has been shaded over the red lighter pink has been shaded in some strategic areas so the pearlescence been added so we've done a little pencil weathering a sludge wash and a final clear coat so these bits are done and looking good We've got the uh, black parts mounted for painting. Parts are uh, primed. Hey, homeboy, what's up? It's me a lucky grey. And the finish is quite lovely. Bit of black shading around some of the edges, the modulation. So a little further lighter shading has been completed. So I painted uh, copper in the vents, a little bit of clear black to blacken it up as a weathering effect. So the pink parts are 100% done. So I started painting, this is just the uh, first coat of the brown, there'll be another one, then red on top of that, then all the little uh, details and just slowly step by step. It does look patchy but it is the hand painting uh, method that I employ. Second coat of red on the figure. A bit more undercoating completed. The black components have been uh, weathered, clear coated and waiting to dry. Final bag of components, the inner frame is to be painted. All the bits laid out. All mounted. All the bits primed. Lost back black all of the parts there's uh, quite a bit so we don't want them touching so I didn't have my camera for one session and this involved uh, painting and uh, finishing the entirety of the inner frame as seen as well as some work on uh, the figure when we saw the figure last it just had its uh, base coat on of a dark grey and uh, brown Using uh, multiple coats, I've uh, hand painted uh, different layers and shades of uh, red, grey, uh, sands to flesh, and yellow to build up the colour. Uh, not the best look, but it's alright. Uh, I've got decals for uh, the eyes that was uh, utilised for the last 112 uh, figure that I've uh, used. I'm going to give it a very light wash on its uh, clothing, apply the decals, uh, correct the finish with a matte. Uh, hand paint gloss for the eyes and she is absolutely done the uh, rods will be mounted into the base also talking about the inner frame we painted it with uh, Gaia Note uh, silver which would be about uh, this color and did some side shading and modular shading with SMS gunmetal at the lowest point, a fair amount of uh, smoke was applied, as well as an overall uh, application of the whole piece of uh, Mr. Crystal Color Silver. 
and that gives it all a very uh, glittery effect that I'm trying to achieve with the whole phase shift mystical armor that the seed universe uh, has so there's been quite a bit of shading on all the parts and it has taken a while as uh, some areas have uh, articulation and you want to make sure you got uh, paint in all the areas and not scratching at the same time the final layer was uh, a double uh, coat of uh, gloss clear uh, from an automotive uh, manufacturer thinned twice what I'm going to do now is uh, give them a wash weather one more coat all the painting believe it or not is done except for the base so with uh, the panel accent color thinned 50-50 we're really bringing out some detail by applying and wiping back and uh, using brown because I've only got brown though it looks pretty good so the base has been permanently super glued in place uh, this was given to me someone else built it for a uh, Hummer Hummer I had to find the attachments uh, to fit the Gundam. I found a sign for the plaque and filed down all the seams, uh, raised bits, imperfections and nub marks. We're going to actually paint and mark this base. All primed. Using a weathering pencil, we have uh, done the outlines, the washes and the final clear coat, allowing it to dry and assemble all painting weathering is done. Doing a base coat, leaving a small section uh, blank for handling. We'll colour that in later. Did a bit of shading with black. Further shading with a lighter brown and clear black. Just uh, giving it a sludge wash. Also cut out the code and stuck it on the sign. Drilled two hole in the base. And that's added. Painted the eyes on the clear bits. All of the parts are weathered, painted, 100% finished. All ready for assembly. Because earlier we have loosened up the holes and have a fairly loose fit, we uh, plug all the butt joints with uh, PVA glue to connect it all together and it will never come apart again. So it's assembled. There is a little bit of traces of PVA glue that will dry clear and elements of it have different sheens of gloss. There will be some uh, decals and a few more clears to even that out as well as a polish slowly coming together this is pretty neat the armor separates and slides around it's uh, still all glued together it's uh, still all painted just the right amount of sanding and uh, work can make this all pretty much work pretty well do lots of test fitting about two thirds of it are all snapped together glued and whatnot coming together very well very happy with the color shading tone all that sort of thing you have to be very careful and take your time when uh, post paint uh, assembly allow up the um, days drying before attempting uh, some of these parts have been dry for uh, weeks you do not want to uh, chip the paint you don't want to damage the plastic you don't want to snap or break bits I've already uh, broken two parts managed to repair them they were not too noticeable so that was uh, very very fortunate but paint chipping is such a huge factor don't rush don't be impatient allow the maximum amount of time for paint to cure and then some then you go for it still got the backpack and other bits and pieces to go if uh, the plastics too tight or it won't go in with a force consider sanding nubs trimming down uh, pegs just making it as loose fit as possible and then relying on the glue to hold it together these are all the mixed water slide decals we will be using on this project especially these eyes for the figure very good find on ebay mix of legitimate uh, bandai uh, decals I'm using the zeta set as some of the uh, vintage signs are very nostalgic 
the crazy modeler seed ones which uh, go for individual particular Gundams in 1-100, one, 1-144 uh, one, one and some could probably pass for 160. Keep your decals dry at all time. I'm going to soak it in a small dish of uh, water, transfer it across. Once a couple of decals have been applied, it's instantly clear coated. We stuck the eyes on the figure and she's looking about a billion times better and more presentable. And we'll do a top coat on the base. SMS clear matte has made very quick work of this figure. As well as matting the space. Once the two are snapped together, that is finished. All of these decals are pre-cut, meaning that the film only covers the printed area and not the whole sheet. Once it's soaked in water and it can move around freely on the paper and is not stuck and force is not required, you slide it onto the part, dry it down, airbrush clear. When the surface is wet, the decal can move uh, freely on the surface. When dry, it's stuck. If it's not wrinkly and if it doesn't need to go ever, over edges, detail, whatever, just clear it immediately. If it does need to be uh, moved around or whatnot, put decal set, allow several hours to dry and then clear it. Make sure you put a clear coat to protect it as it will peel off or damage over time. So we're doing the decal process and we need to sub-assemble to see what's covered and what's not. So I've got the backpack and I could see I'm going to be putting a lot of decals on top of the wings. Nothing really under the wings, maybe the sides, definitely the top. And we've already started the torso. Uh, the torso is the center point, the eye gets drawn to the chest, to the head. So that's where you want the most uh, interesting decals. As well as the shoulders, as it's quite blank and you can put some pretty serious uh, insignias. We've got that going on. A few streams and other projects have talked about decal theory and all the other parts we just put little bits of words and warning signs and whatnot, just spartan around some ra rather random areas. Uh, this one's important that this marking is definitely depicted in the uh, show and source material so that must appear there. Other ones are just you know due to budget to the anime and all that they don't show all the markings. And here we go, we've got a, a bit of a branding and uh, the country's uh, name on it. And I go on both sides because I don't know which one's going to come forward, but you, you'll also see it from the rear. It's very important to keep your dry decals, your work area, and your water separate just in case of spillage and uh, decal damage. I also put the parts on skewers so I can uh, handle them, apply the decals, and then top coat them quite uh, quickly. We've got a few decals already applied. I'm using two different brands, Crazy Model and Bandai. Both behave and operate completely different. Crazy Model takes an insane amount of time for the decals to lift, where the Bandai ones are practically a uh, few seconds. So you need to test and adjust. It's probably best to do it brand by brand unless, you know, you've handled each of them quite uh, frequently. So I got all of the clear coated and deckled components <coughs> done. One of the jobs I have around the shop is <coughs> repairing toys, any sort of uh, figures or anything that gets damaged in transit. Some of these models are very expensive yet fragile and can fetch anywhere around two to five hundred dollars. This is at the uh, higher end, a very very uh, cool piece from uh, One Piece. Now the cloud facade around his head completely uh, disintegrated in a few parts which uh, needed to be pinned a lot like a resin kit would and each piece uh, super glued with just a light uh, dot. Uh, is a mixture of uh, materials in these uh, toys. Uh, the main body is uh, PVC and some other parts are a soft uh, polyvinyl, a little bit of uh, ABS. It's uh, quite a mix of uh, that painting, shading, the whole uh, lot. So very, very uh, fascinating and uh, this has taken me a few days of just pin one bit, glue and move on. I've uh, probably been doing that for this place and a few others for uh, several years now. 
Getting closer to the conclusion of uh, the builds. Uh, we've got the layout here of a bunch of parts. Uh, nothing left really in the bag. We can see that all the decals have been applied, mostly when it's together, so we can see that the majority of the decals have uh, frontage. Now I am going for a deep gloss sheen, and having a look at it, it is very shiny, though it's quite uh, orange peely. You can see that uh, the shine is uh, quite uh, gritty on these bits, yet on these pieces it's dulled, but a lot shinier. Uh, that's because these are being polished with uh, a range from 2000 grit all the way down to 7000 and we'll receive another uh, clear coat uh, polish and a final clear coat and these uh, pieces are yet to be uh, polished uh, from all the shading and layers of uh, lacquer and whatnot the orange peel exaggerates and uh, gets uh, rougher and rougher interrupting uh, the sheen so we're going to be uh, fixing that today and oh boy did that take a very very long time in polishing all of these parts together now as the questions I see a few times online do you top coat or paint uh, then assemble or assemble them paint I assemble as much as I can as you saw in this uh, video I glue and whatnot paint I top coat and affect all the parts though I also do a top coat when it's all complete uh, to make sure that the finish and the sheen is uh, universal and once uh, a few top coats has been applied this is my range of uh, sandpaper the two to the uh, left are very very cheap uh, 2000, 3000, the 5 and 7000 were imported from Germany. Amazing sandpaper. I just uh, sand, uh, wet sand every component. Let's say I'll focus on the wing 2000, 3000, 5000, 7000. Making sure I'm not picking up any raised areas. The higher the grit, the more force. The lightest grit, I go quite light. I feel it for my finger. If it's still rough, I keep polishing. Once it starts to feel quite smooth, even though the finish doesn't pick up right with the camera, I know I've got a plain feel that I could start applying paint. Now what I'm going to be doing is using Automotive Clear, uh, cut with uh, lacquer thinner. I did a 50-50 ratio, store it, then another 50-50, chuck it through the Ophir airbrush, and I'm going to coat uh, each piece, quite water down, double wet coat, and that should give it a nice mirror sheen. I uh, will rig it all up, paint it, and have a look. So, we've got everything with uh, retardant and automotive clear, nice and glossy. Yeah. And the large piece here, this will require another polish. So, after a sufficient amount of time of drying, it was snap fitted together, and I've taken it home to display at the Australian Open Model Expo give the whole rundown of filling out the form, putting it on display, all that sort of thing and see how far it can go. Model Expo or the Australian Model Expo is run in Melbourne, Australia in the early months of June during the long weekend. It is run by the IPMS as well as other uh, hobby clubs and organisations in a committee. I was not able to film or take photos a lot as I had a lot going on as presented in the vlog and review of Model Expo. Though during my other duties and responsibilities I brought the model up to uh, the registration desk early in the morning. I filled out a bit of paperwork that had my personal details as well as the models that I brought in as much detail as possible. They were all of a 1100 Gundam Bandai persuasion. Put those in and a critique uh, individual would have a look at it and class it in the category that it belongs. There was two that was suitable for that model. Mecha Gundam out of the box which is just snapped together glued together built only utilizing what's in the actual box uh, painting uh, cutting gluing removing seam lines decals a custom paint job is all acceptable under these special set of rules and uh, modified 
normally these were under open and anything went uh, modifying is when you kit bash scratch build combine parts do all sorts of uh, things to make it more special fantastic and uh, just jazz it up quite a bit so both models including the providence was entered as such i paid a small fee and uh, took it to the table with uh, an escort as the event was very very large and you had about several islands of tables with um, many many categories and many hundreds of uh, models on display the, the event goes for three days you can enter it uh, saturday morning or friday during setup which isn't technically a day and it has to remain on display until the Monday afternoon for the awards ceremony if you were to win an award to collect it. Uh, they present them first, second, third and uh, anything that scores very highly as uh, commended. It's uh, judged out of uh, how well it's built, how well it's painted, did you provide resources, how close is it to the reference material, as well as uh, some other uh, categories. I've done a video uh, covering IPMS style events. It remained on display, plenty of people had a look at it, didn't quite win. I packed it up and collected it, took it home. It was just excellent to put it on display and have people look at it, as well as support the events, look at all the other models on display, learn from the experience. It's uh, very worthwhile checking out. Probably a few things I forgot to mention. Once you place it on uh, these uh, tables during the day, people can take photos and whatnot. The sort of information that's written down from when you registered is uh, the category name sponsor on a large card. The smaller cards has the scale of your model, uh, what make of it, and the fact that it belongs to that category. Your instructions or reference material is put inside a box underneath the table and uh, if people aren't familiar with uh, Gundams or military or whatever they're able to read it and see exactly what it is which makes obvious sense to us Gundam modelers though with the amount of uh, modelers out there if any of us looked at World War One uh, planes or some sort of type of figures it would be absolutely lost so creating it is very very important for everyone to consume and enjoy different aspects of the hobby that they're not familiar with there's a lot to learn from it as well. So we're back in shop and this has uh, travelled around the city and been on display very very successfully. We'll uh, repose it and permanently chuck him on display. And here is the finished model in shop. So you can see the gloss sheen there's only one mistake made on it. This is a gift for Dante. Gun. Her lesson paint, a Gundam Evolve scheme, figure, and title. So this pretty much wraps up the element of building, putting together the thought process, considering the design, painting, cleaning up, assembly, all the test fitting everything that came to uh, build up the video or uh, the model to be as functional and presenting as uh, such in the finished result and uh, it's a different type of uh, video to make I did experiment with the greys one and it showed you from start to finish of just finishing something that was almost of a high grade esque level a master grade is a completely different story with the gimmicks the articulation something older that does require a lot of cleanup uh, sinks uh, imperfections a lot of things I don't talk about in my videos because it's uh, not important enough I didn't address it in the past or it's something you just don't quite throw into a video you just summarize it as removing nubs seams and what so the video will be quite valuable for people especially asking the question do you assemble then paint or paint then assemble normally a very controversial very difficult uh, answer as people have different approaches for uh, all the modeling they do or they change the approach from model to model subject to subject type to type as you can see that I try to do as much assembling and testing and whatnot as humanly possible with designs to be pulled apart painted and then reassembled with gluing well after painting uh, this method works very well for me and I'm able to display it have other people handle the model without things uh, falling apart some purely design um, 
rely off the snap design and function of Bandai kits. Other people such as myself do not trust it and adjust and model around it such as loosening parts and whatnot. And of late I'm really enjoying the gloss look but I really enjoy uh, shading using smoke to tickle or touch the bottom or the lower part of uh, parts and using multiple colours which the paint does land on dry and it looks quite bumpy when you put uh, the clear layers and this is where the polishing, uh, the extra thinning, the retardant, all of those sort of things come and play and is uh, very important. Plus I've done a lot of cutting a lot of drilling, a lot of modifications and using the dissolved putty and cutting polish sanding that down as uh, well. When uh, looking at this you can't quite tell what's original what's not unless you're very familiar with the build and how it seamlessly goes from what Bandai engineered to uh, the work that's uh, outcome. What I'm not 100% satisfied and where I've made mistakes uh, in this build is in the last week I rushed the clear coat bits and settled the parts down not having proper uh, holders. Uh, half the idea of the challenge is being patient as well as only using what's at my disposal at the uh, Animasia shop. I had a uh, two parts chip, one near the feet uh, which is the pink paint going to pink plastic. It's virtually not seen and there's another chip on the part that I can't quite remember but it's covered by other armor and just absolutely not visible. Uh, all of that was repairable. I had a couple of cracks as uh, parts didn't fit together uh, quite right and with the build up of paint they were forced and uh, broke. Those also are not 100% uh, visible and I think the uh, gloss could have been more smoother from further polishing and clear coats but of how long I've been working on this taking a break and start it again it was time to finish it and move on to another project. I am aware that this video is stupidly long and sometimes I don't have a chance to talk to the audience and uh, the viewers uh, that much, though there is a market to long videos on uh, YouTube, especially people who are looking for the really long work in progresses, uh, the series of uh, building a very long term project, that sort of thing, but I feel that this is definitely a very handy tool and resource. Uh, for those that just want to fill in the gaps that uh, there's a bunch of tutorials and people post you know remove nubs airbrush or all, all the obvious things and some of it's repeated others have different uh, approaches or takes but there's just not enough where people analyze the very start to the very end and putting in all the nitty-gritty detail and whatnot so yes the video is very long I'm aware of that and I'm aware that a lot of people aren't going to watch it because uh, time factor or interest or whatever but it's just one of two of those that do watch it to the end and learn it or just enjoy it for the building aspect I appreciate you guys sticking around and really just absorbing and consuming the whole thing this video took absolutely ages uh, to edit as well and uh, during the year that I spent on it I went through a few cameras so the quality uh, changed to the era where I had this camera I really didn't like and there's pictures and other things and the video aspect is not uh, the best uh, aspects of my video where I use a very nice uh, camera I can't quite justify upgrading to uh, HG, HD though all of that aside I think this is a very interesting resource and when an anybody ever asks about the whole process of our painting or some of the more difficult questions about incorporating a master grade and painting and imperfections and just doing something at a competition level, I can definitely present this. And even though it's a bittersweet thing to evaluate your own build and you look at the uh, errors as the one building it you know where you've definitely messed up and whatnot and some of the strong points where you can see a gradual improvement from your previous uh, kit to kits well in the past. I think I've definitely done an okay job. I definitely displayed it with pride at the uh, competition and very happy for it to live and stay at uh, Animasia. This uh, model was give, give, given to me by uh, Dante to work on it as it was a very old piece of stock that sat around the shop potentially for uh, several years without uh, selling and being under the administration of uh, the multiple owners who owned uh, the shop. So it's very interesting to be uh, built in-house and to continually remain in-house as the source of uh, inspiration, display and example of the Bandai Gundam products that can be bought from this uh, establishment. I keep talking. Not vibrate, it's uh, like a, it's a pain, well, well, 
but uh, gone eventually because uh, it's painted like a metal. Yeah. yeah and, and there it is on final display to remain there permanently yeah. with the PP spell. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching as always until next time stay tuned for further content if you watched it all the way to the end Thank you very much uh, that sort of uh, dedication it helps me the most that is the YouTube uh, grind game in defeating the analytics and uh, getting up that one step of uh, Conquering the platform I suppose the usual content is uploaded weekly to twice a week. Check out the social media links down below and all that sort of extra stuff. Catch you guys next time. Uh, let me know if I should do a long video like this again.